What's up? This is D Smoke from Inglewood, California, and these are the top five lessons learned from bullying on the fader. Number five is don't stand near puddles if you don't want to get wet. So uh, my second day of second grade, it was a rainy day and it was it was raining really hard. It was almost dark during the day and I'm walking by a puddle and this kid, I remember his name, it was Joshua. Joshua sees the puddle and he sees me and he just splashes in the water twice, whoosh, whoosh, right? And wets up all of my clothes and I'm like, what the heck, right? In a split second, I just was like, oh hell no. And I socked him in the stomach, bam. And then he just doubles over like, oh, he doesn't like try to fight me or anything. The teacher pulls me to the side and is like, oh my God, why did you do this? Do they beat you at home? And I'm like, like no, he splashed water on me, you know? Josh never messed with me again. The moral of the story is, don't stand near puddles if you don't wanna get splashed. So number four is don't cry if you're winning. Another fight. I had in third grade. It was after school and my friend Herbie was trying to get to his bike. This kid wouldn't let him get to his bike. You know, he had started pushing Herbie like, what are you gonna do about it? You know, I was like, come on, man, let him get to his bike. He has to go home. I'm trying to defend my friend. And then the kid pushes me. And you know, I had specific instructions for mom. If you if somebody put their hands on you, make them wish they didn't. So I hop up, take off on him, bam, bam. And I'm punching upwards because he was way bigger than me. Bam, 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 bam. Socking him up, I probably get a good five shots in. You know, then he swung and missed, he was slow. So they, they separate us and then take us to the office. And I just couldn't stop the tears from flowing. I was just like, I was so overwhelmed with anger. Like I felt justified for fighting. And I was like, nah, y'all don't get it. Y'all don't understand what I'm going through as a, as a seven year old. It's hard out here for us, you know. When I got home, my mom asked me what happened. And I told her like, he was messing with my friend. So I was sorry, man. My mom was like, that's it. Okay, you good, you know. So the moral of the story is don't cry if you win it. Lesson number three, if you're not black, don't say the N word. I was in third grade one time and it was this kid. He used to be my friend and I used to defend him, you know, until one day he just decides to call me out of my name and he calls me a with an ER on it. He just got mad and was like, shut up, you I hop up, I nonchalantly walk over to him. Like he doesn't know what's about to happen. And you know how like spoiled people just don't, they're disconnected from reality. So he's looking up at me like, what are you gonna? And before he could get that thought across, I just took off on him. Bam, 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 bam. And he chose a bad day because it was a substitute teacher. The substitute was black. So he turned a blind eye, right? It was like, oh, you know, they pulled me off. He doesn't send me to the office or anything. I remember as a kid being like, I guess I heard it on a movie, but I was like, this ain't over. I ain't finished with you, you know? It's 400 years of frustration that I'm taking out on this kid. But yeah, he shouldn't have said that. Why you gotta go and say that, man? Lesson number two, don't talk about people's parents. I was on the bus, I used to catch the bus to school and this kid is kicking the back of my chair and I'm like, hey, stop kicking my, stop kicking my seat. He's like, shut up, what are you gonna do, you know? And I, we just had this little bagging session and kids don't know how to bag by that time, he's just saying stupid stuff. And as soon as he start going for my family, I'm like, hey, look, man, you can say what you want, but don't say nothing about my dad because Pops was locked up at the time. And he was like, well, your mama this. I was like, whatever, I see my mom every day. I guess he had a moment where he was like, what are you gonna do? And then he paused and he was like, well, you're daddy. And as soon as he said it, I took off. Smack, 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 smack. Socking him in the face. The kid starts screaming like, fight, fight, fight. Bus driver comes to the back, picks me up, literally. <laughs> like, get off my bus, you gotta get off. So he gets me off, I walk back home and uh, tell my mom what happened. I'm in tears again and she's not mad. You know, she knows Pops is locked up and that's a soft spot. My dad has heard all my fighting stories. While he was locked up and when we visited him, that was probably always the nature of the conversation first because that was the most exciting thing happening in my life, you know, as a kid. And I felt like he would want to know that I was defending his honor, you know, in his absence or, or trying to be a man in the ways that I knew how at that time, you know, at six, seven and eight years old. Number one, give respect, get respect. When I was 20 years old, my brother, sir, was 19. And it was a time where uh, I was in college, but we're still in the same house. But it's like that transitional period where you got grown boys in the house. So I guess sir got mad at something and slammed the door. My mom, before she could even say anything, I was like, hey, bro, you're not going to be slamming no doors in my mama house. Sir was like, what you going to do about it? 
I was like, bro, lock up. Me and Sir have never like bare knuckle fought like strangers. We had a, enough respect to be like, man, put the gloves on. So we throw the gloves on, we get up under the street light. At first, I'm getting the best of him, right? I'm a little faster, so I'm boom, 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 boom. And I see him run through the punch and just come with some haymakers. Bam, he caught me. I step back like, oh, that hurt, right? Then he hit me with another one, bam, right? So I step back again and we square back up. And then we pause like, are you good? Then he asked me, you good? I was like, yeah. And he's like, for sure. And then we both walked off. But that only had to happen once, you know? And even the way we chose to go about it showed a lot of respect, because it's like, I'm not gonna hit you like no stranger. You had a little respectful fade and then respectfully admired our wounds in the, in the same mirror. So that kind of solidified how much we, we respect each other as men. And I don't think he slammed the doors after that either, you know?